Welcome to Smyrna Christian Church, where the entire Word of God is taught straight from the Bible. Good evening. Welcome back to Smyrna Christian Church. Going to get into another round of questions this evening. Always remember 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2, where it says, If any man thinketh he knoweth a thing, he knoweth nothing as he ought yet to know. And the point is, don't ever think you, that you know everything about something to learn in the Bible. There's always more to learn about every single subject. And as soon as you start thinking, oh, I don't need to study anymore about that certain thing. I already know everything there is to know about that. That's when you're making a huge mistake. So continue to study God's Word. Study to show yourself approved, like it says in 2 Timothy 2.15. And never take my word or anyone else's word for what they say. If you can't prove it in the Bible, don't believe it. So let's get into these questions. And I, I do always think about 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, in connection with that other verse I mentioned, where it says, Let every man take heed, lest he fall. So let's get into the questions. Let's ask, and of course, there's no gender in that man and woman. So let's get into it. Let's ask a word of wisdom from our Father. Yeah, of a Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. In this place you've given us, we can teach your word. We ask you to guide us through this study with your Holy Spirit. We ask you to give us eyes to see and ears to hear to understand and teach your word. We ask that your words be spoken and your will be done during this study. Thank you, and we love you so much, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus Christ, precious name. Amen. All right, first question. We don't know this person's name. I thought those on the good side now in paradise will be in the millennium if they don't know the whole truth. Who are those who overcome before, or overcame before, thought God's elect, the 7,000, are the ones who overcame before? And so, first of all, they're speaking of the gulf of Luke chapter 16, how when everyone dies, they either go to the good side of the gulf or the bad side of the gulf. Now, those on the good side of the gulf, they have an eternal soul. They do not have to be taught in the millennium. They overcame by believing in the Savior, Jesus Christ. So they believed while they were in the flesh. They accepted Christ as their Savior. So when they died, they went to the good side of the gulf. They have an eternal soul. They do not need to be taught in the millennium. But then God's elect, those were those who they overcame in the first earth age. When Satan rebelled and uh, they stood against Satan at that original rebellion. Like you see in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, the elect were chosen before the foundation of the world. And of course, the elect served Jesus Christ in the flesh also. But they were even chosen in the first earth age. And you see that the elect in Revelation chapter 20, you find out they will be priests and they will reign with Jesus Christ through that thousand year teaching period. Tammy from Virginia. Jesus said he will come the same way he left. Does this mean he will ride a white horse into Jerusalem like he rode a donkey into Jerusalem? Well, it is true that he was on a donkey at one point during the first advent. And it's also true, you see in Revelation chapter 19, that when he arrives at the second advent, he will be on a white horse. But you're referring to Acts chapter 1 verse 11. It, it says that he's going to return the same way that he left. So the way he left has nothing to do with him when he was riding on the donkey. Acts chapter 1 verse 11, this is what the, the two angels spoke after Christ ascended to heaven, after he resurrected and he walked with them for 40 days. Then he ascended and returned to heaven. And then there was two angels right there, and this is what they said when that happened. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So this same Jesus, he is going to return at the second advent. And you see in verse 9 of Acts chapter 1, it says, He was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So he's coming back here. Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 26. See that after the tribulation, they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then where were they at in Acts chapter 1? They were on the Mount of Olives. 
Well, you know what you see in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 3 and 4? It's telling you that when the day of the Lord comes, the Lord is going to go fight against the nation just like He fought in the day of battle. And it says, And His feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And I will also mention a con an interesting connection to that, uh, Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 through 14. We don't know this person's name. Can you provide the scripture that says God heals the deadly wound and not Satan as Christ? And they're saying Satan in his role as the false Christ. I can't find it. Thank you. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. God says, I wound and I heal. And you read about the deadly wound in Revelation chapter 13. You see that even before the deadly wound, Satan's on earth. He's taken over. He has great power and authority. And that seat, what's that seat in the Greek? It means a throne. So he has all that on earth even before the deadly wound. But then comes the deadly wound. But then the deadly wound is healed. And then when the deadly wound is healed, that's when he will convince everyone in the world, except for God's elect, that he is the Messiah. So do not be deceived. And that beast of Revelation chapter 13 verse 1 is Satan, just like the dragon of Revelation chapter 12 verse 3 is Satan. Satan has different roles. Mark, we don't know where Mark's from. Out of curiosity, where in the Bible can I find information about the sons of Anak and the mention of fallen angels? I have never really been taught about fallen angels, and it is a new concept to me. I would like to understand more and have biblical support if I am to share with others. So first of all, I will mention the sons of Anak. That is the descendants of the fallen angels. And the descendants of the fallen angels, their offspring are giants. The first place you learn about the fallen angels is Genesis chapter 6, where they are called the sons of God. Every single time in the Old Testament when the phrase sons of God is used, it's talking about angels. And it's only used about five times. Genesis chapter 6, also in Job chapter 1 and 2, and Job chapter 38. So you find out in Genesis chapter 6 that the, the angels, they came to earth. And they seduced women, and then giants were born. And you read also about it in Jude chapter 1, verse 6. It speaks about the fallen angels, how they left their habitation. They were never born of woman, but they left their habitation in heaven. They came to earth and they seduced woman. And they are damned for that reason. And then, so about the sons of... Oh, first I want to mention, so they were here... But they're also, and they, then they also came another time, as it says, also after that, in Genesis chapter 6, about verse 4, they came a second time even after the flood of Noah. And that would be like through, which, that's why Goliath the giant was here, because of that second influx, he was of the offspring of the fallen angels. But they are com coming back again in the future, even to us, and we don't know how soon or how far away that is. But Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 9, when Satan is cast out onto this earth, and when he arrives as the Antichrist, the fallen angels are coming with him, claiming to be ministers of God, coming to bring you to Christ, but it's the false Christ. Now concerning the sons of Anak, make note of Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. It says, And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. You can also read about them in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verses 10 through 11, and many other places you can learn about the fallen angels and their offspring, but those are the places I'm going to mention here. I'll also mention those two times where you have the word giants in Numbers chapter 13, verse 33, as well as when you have the word giants in Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, those are the only three places that the word Nephilim, that Hebrew word, is used. Craig from California. So there must be a church of Antichrist, question mark. And yes, it's called the synagogue of Satan. 
You can read about the synagogue of Satan. It's mentioned in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, and Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. And also make note of Mark chapter 13, verse 9, and Luke chapter 21, verse 12, where it's speaking about when it's time, when you refuse to worship the, the false Christ, you will be delivered up before kings and rulers. You will be delivered up before the synagogues, and you will stand against Satan, and you will allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. And of course, Satan himself is the Antichrist, not some flesh man. We just mentioned Revelation chapter 12, how Satan's going to be cast out of heaven onto this earth. He's not coming here to watch some guy get worshipped. The Antichrist is Satan himself. D from Arkansas. Can you tell me where in the King James Bible it says we are not to call anyone moros? And that is Matthew chapter 5 verse 22. I'll read it. It says, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. That word fool is moros. First of all, what's that word raka means? It means empty. So that'd be like you telling someone, oh, you're too stupid to ever understand this. That'd be like you saying to them raka, then you're in, you're in danger of the council. You're not in a good spot. But if you call someone moros, that's like you telling someone that you don't ever even have a chance to be saved. That's what it'd be like to call someone moros. So what to say? If you do that, then you're the one that's in danger of hellfire. So certainly do not want to go that way. Jerry from Michigan. Was Pharaoh and Nebuchadnezzar types for the Antichrist? Trying to figure out if Antichrist or the New World Order, and if we will work in one of them like Joseph and Daniel, or am I reading it wrong? Um, Pharaoh and Nebuchadnezzar are types of the Antichrist. You can lead, read a lot about Pharaoh in uh, Ezekiel chapters 29 through 32. And even in, in Ezekiel chapter 31, you even have Satan himself described. But of course, uh, Satan is not Pharaoh, but he is a type. And uh, in, in Ezekiel 31, it's kind of saying, look, you think you're so great? Look how great Satan was. And he's still going to be destroyed. He's still damned. So kind of will knock people down a peg or two there. But um, so anyway, um, Nebuchadnezzar, of course, is one of the greatest types for the false Christ, for the Antichrist, where um, he's even called uh, Nebuchadnezzar as the king of Babylon. But you even say that you see that Satan is even called the king of Babylon in Isaiah chapter 14. He's also called Lucifer there. And what's Babylon mean? It means confusion. So yes, Nebuchadnezzar and Pharaoh were types. But you say, um, will we work in, uh, you're saying, are we going to work in the one world system? Absolutely not. That's what it means to take the mark of the beast in your right hand. It means to work for Satan and his system. That is something we will never ever do. Um, Revelation chapter 13 verse 16 and 17 says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. To have a mark in your right hand, that means you're doing Satan's work. To have the mark in your forehead, that means you're deceived in your mind. It's the opposite of having the seal of God in your forehead, like you read about in Revelation chapter 7 and Revelation chapter 9. And then verse 17 of Revelation 13 says, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And is that going to be a problem? Of course not. How much have we been learning in Psalms, how much God provides? And if you were to doubt that after is even what we just read this last Sunday, what was it, Psalms 106? After that, if you would ever doubt that God would provide, then you got big problems. God provides every step of the way. But you see, and that Revelation 13, verse 16 and 17, that's after the deadly wound is healed. That's when Satan's going to, everyone's got to make a choice. And he's going to make the decree that everyone must worship him. He's claiming to be God. But of course, we will not worship him. We will stand against him. And we will, you will never, ever worship the false Christ. We never will. 
but many, many, many will because they were never taught God's Word. Do not be deceived. Uh, Synthony, we don't know where she's from. Will he look like a flesh man? And she's speaking of when Satan is here as the false Christ. He's going to look like God. What's it say in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2? You find out before we're gathered together that Jesus Christ is the deception of Satan as the false Christ. It says, He opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God and that is worshipped, so that he sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 12, it describes Satan. That's where you even learn about even his rebellion in the first earth age. It says he's full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. And what's it say in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14? It says Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And that word transformed, it can even mean to disguise. And Satan, he will have that power to transform. Do not be deceived. Darby from Kentucky. Do you know if the word hanged is supposed to be grieved, written in Matthew chapter 27, verse 5? Is it true that hanged is mistranslated? That word translated as hanged in Matthew 27, verse 5, the Greek word is aponkomai, and it means to strangle. And then I will mention, um, so Matthew chapter 25, speaking about, or Matthew chapter 27, verse 5, speaking about Judas Iscariot, it says, And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And then Acts chapter 1, verse 18 says, and Now this man, speaking about Judas, purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. We don't know this person's name. I, oh, and that, yeah, that, I actually, I'm, I'm just keeping this uh, private, or I'm keeping it anonymous because it's kind of private in, in a way. So, um, okay, let's go. Um, I have a question on social media use that I need help with. I have, a, and then you say, you know a person, you said that you unfriended them on Facebook because they were doing certain things that I'm, I'm not going to read. And then you said there were just inappropriate things that I do not want to see. Um, then you continue, they keep trying to re-add me and I feel guilty about not adding them, but I feel it is best for me to not reconnect. On the other hand, I feel like I could have a positive influence. I'm struggling with this. Do I add people that I can't mesh with? I feel like I'm being judgmental if I don't add them. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. And that, that's something, of course, that you want to pray about, ask God to guide you. I will mention on Facebook, you can go to them and you can just unfollow them, and then you, but you're still friends with them. But if you unfollow them, it means their posts will not come up on your, thing, on your page, on your feed. But um, what's it say in Mark chapter 2, verse 16 and 17? Um, it's when, um, it was when the, the holier-than-thou Pharisees, they said, how is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. In Isaiah chapter 65, verse 5, it says, uh, Speaking of certain, which, which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. And when someone acts like that, it says, These are a smoke in my nose, what God says, and a fire that burneth all the day. Now, I know that you in particular are not acting like a hoyer than thou hypocrite, but you're just trying to do the right thing here. But I just want to mention those scriptures. And it's one thing if someone's trying to come to you, trying to convert you to some false religion. I mean, in that case, yeah, have nothing to do with that ever of course then it's time to separate yourself from someone but and you, like i said you have to let god guide you on this of course but i mean uh, christ christ came to call sinners to repentance so like you said you could be a good influence on them what would be incredibly tragic is for if you were to just have nothing to do with them at all just because maybe they were doing some things that weren't all that good you know but but then if they think you're acting like a hoyer than that hypocrite 
then that could even maybe turn them away from God. So that would be the greatest tragedy in this. And once again, I know that you are not acting like a hoyer than thou hypocrite. I know that. But um, I just want to mention those scriptures. Do as God guides you to do always. You pray about it. We'll be praying for you on that. One more question. Scott, we don't know where Scott's from. My question is in Daniel chapter 7, 11 and 12, verses 11 and 12. The role of the beast, one world order, and the role of Antichrist, Satan, is thrown in the lake of fire before the millennium. And that's really spelled out in Revelation chapter 19, verses 19 and 20. But the beast is a role of Satan. And uh, then you continue. What is the name of the role that Satan will be playing when he's released from the pit after the thousand year millennium? So, like you said, when Jesus Christ returns, then Satan's role as the beast and his role as the false prophet are cast into the lake of fire. They are no more. He can never use those roles again. But then, so let's go to Revelation chapter 20. What's it say in verse 2? It says, And he laid hold, he being an angel, he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So you still have those four roles right there mentioned. Then Revelation chapter 20, verse 7, it says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So he's called Satan there. And then Revelation chapter 20, verse 10, And then, then so you see in those next couple of verses, he goes out to deceive, convince whoever he can to follow him at that time. He can no more disguise himself as Christ, he can no more use that role he had even as the beast. But he's going to even convince very many people to follow him, which is crazy, but that's what's going to happen. Then verse 10 of Revelation chapter 20 says, And the devil, so there he's called the devil, that deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. And once again, those are simply roles of Satan. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. You find out in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 18 and 19, that a fire will come from the midst of him, and it'll be turned to ashes. And it says, Never shalt thou be anymore. Now let's take a second on these roles. And so he's called the serpent. You know that's from Genesis chapter 3, when he even beguiled Eve. You also read about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Well, you remember what he said in Genesis chapter 3? He said, you shall not surely die, but your eyes will be open and you'll be as gods. Well, what do you think he's going to be saying to people when he's let out the millennium? He's going to be saying, oh, you're not going to die. God's not going to cast you into the lake of fire. Just follow me. You'll be as gods. And many people are going to even follow him at that time. The devil, what did he, that takes you to Matthew chapter 4. How did Satan try to tempt Jesus Christ? He's called the devil there. He quoted scripture, but he barely twisted it to make it false. He used religion. What about Satan? That's his role as the accuser. As you see in Job chapter 1, and you, as you see in Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1. And also... Um, Though the dragon, I almost skipped the dragon, so you can read about the dragon a great deal in Revelation chapter 12. Certain th a couple of things it says there about is that he, he persecuted the woman and he makes war with those who keep the commandments of Jesus Christ. So Satan does have many different roles. He uses many different ways to deceive. You stand against him when he arrives as the false Christ. We mentioned, seems like almost every day I end up saying, you know from 1 Corinthians 15, if you're still in the flesh, Jesus Christ has not returned. Christ, Satan is arriving as the false Christ. Do not be deceived. You wait on the true Christ to return that you read about, as we mentioned in that, also in Daniel chapter 7, uh, beginning with chapter 9, or Daniel chapter 7, about verses 9 through 14 can read about even the return of, of, of our Lord there. Let's go to our Father's throne. Yahweh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. In this place you've given us, we can teach your word. We just ask you to continue to give us understanding, not just for ourselves, but so we can share them with others. Thank you, and we love you so much, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus Christ, precious name, amen.
year 2024 at Smyrna Christian Church in Kokomo, Indiana by Pastor Jesse Sisk. God bless.